And so Chikamori um, is, um, is from our chapter and uh, vice president of the civil rights chapter. And the past pre uh, past she has done the treasury role and the secretary post. And she was born in, and raised in Okinawa, Japan. After graduating from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, with a Bachelor of Science degree in accounting, she obtained a CPA license. She spent over 10 years working as an internal auditor and consultant in companies across the USA, Japan, and Singapore. She moved to the Bay Area in 2015 and became a licensed real estate agent serving international clients in both residential and commercial. She joined ARIA in 2017 and currently serving as Vice President of Silicon Valley Chapter. Welcome, Chika and Philip Ganeri. Uh, sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Um, Philip is the CEO of uh, ES Bank Share Inc. and Empire State Bank. He has 34 years in banking experience with various bank banking and lending institutions such as Hamilton Federal Servings, Home Federal Savings, yeah. the Treasury role and its responsibility. So these are the panelists. And if you could introduce yourself a little bit, because I don't have a lot of your bio <laughs> uh, right now. So if you can, you know, uh, introduce yourself and then go right into best, best practices. My name is David Benes. I've been with ARIA for quite a while, as you explained. Um, so we've seen the organization grow quite um, quite a bit over the years. And it seems that this new um, tangent that we're going on, or not tangent, but um, uh, of helping the chapters to um, to take it to a next It started out with like, hey, just do whatever you need to do, get people to come to the organization, people to come to your, your um, different meetings. But now we want to uh, make sure that you're successful for each one of them. By doing the standardized bylaws, that's a good start. And then there's one other part that I, um, and that's some of the best practices, not only for a nonprofit like ARIA, but pretty much any organization, especially when you start adding more people to it. It's somewhat like a family. If you take care of the money, then it uh, seems to cut down on a lot of uh, the uh, arguments back and forth. So some of that is, number one is create a budget. A budget isn't just something that you put on a piece of paper, but basically you're telling people what are you going to do, where are you going to spend the money, and how much. So you're trying to minimize surprises for um, the rest of the people involved in the organization so they don't feel like hey, we were collecting money, we were um, raising money for the organization, all of a sudden it's sent how some play a surprise somewhere down the road. So you're not, you're trying to create a budget so you have to minimize those surprises. I realize there's always gonna be surprises in, every, in spending, things are gonna change, but you're trying to minimize those. The less surprises you have, the less um, arguments you might have, I guess, when it comes to these types of things. The next part is, um, so number one is a budget. The next part is accounting. You want to um, create your accounting so it matches as much as possible to your budget. So that means if you have a travel budget, hey, let's have an account for travel so that you can match you, how much you spent to how much you budgeted. So that you can do that through the year and then at the end of the year compare how much you budgeted to compared to how much you spent. Um, one of the things that does come up during the part is uh, reimbursements. Sometimes um, chapter, um, different board members or different people in a chapter will spend their own money and need to be reimbursed. That happens. Um, it might be that they need to go down to the bakery and buy something for an event and they don't know how much they're gonna spend and it doesn't make sense for them to take a company check because they're not a signer. They go down there, they buy the, 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 the food, drinks, whatever it needs to be, then they get reimbursed. That's understandable. What you don't wanna do is make a practice of doing that. You don't wanna have um, one board member basically putting all of their expenses on their credit card so they can get miles and then get reimbursed for it. You wanna keep the accounting 
centralized um, in an accounting program. I always recommend to people QuickBooks is easiest. About, um, say like 90% of small businesses use QuickBooks. It's probably higher than that for this type of, uh, of level of monetary money that's going through the, Quick, um, through the bank account. QuickBooks is the accounting program that everybody uses. You might have another one, which is completely fine, but if anybody was to ask for a recommendation, QuickBooks, one thing that you want um, a decision on what you wanna do, you have QuickBooks online and then you have a desktop version. The problem with the desktop version is what do you do with that database when the board member who is keeping it moves? Um, that is something difficult and that you need to work out. Then you have the online version, which is a little bit easier to keep in a centralized uh, location because it's online and you can pass that um, login to the next board member who's gonna be in charge of that. Is one better than the other? Uh, perfect, preferably, I prefer to work in the um, desktop version to work in. The QuickBooks Online is better for a centralized location. Uh, you can look at the different costs and different pros and cons of that. One of the other items is keeping item and things in a centralized, such as paperwork, is I talked a little bit with Jessica on that and we're coming up with some way that you can keep the corporate documents and any other documents in some central location. Every year the board moves from one place to another. You don't have usually a, a central office for the chapter, but you need to keep paperwork and you need to be able to keep that for multiple years. So we wanted to set up some type of things for a paperless where you can keep those. They can be accessed by those board members for multiple years. You can go back and look at different documents. If there's some type of um, investigation, some governmental investigation that needs to happen from two years ago, where are you gonna go to get those documents? We need to keep those documents someplace so that each board um, succeeding can access those documents. We talked about using a, a, a centralized Dropbox one each chapter that the board members can access, they can add to those every year going forward. Um, the last part of this is the tax return. The tax return, if you did a budget and you did the accounting and you kept the documents, the tax return should be very simple. I know I get a lot of people, they go, wow, I need to do the tax return. And you're about a week before deadline. You know what, if you would do those first part of budget, proper accounting, the tax return should just be a byproduct of what you've already done, keeping out all the proper documents. Great. That's uh, everything in a nutshell. All right. Well, thank you so much, David. Um, you know, thank you so much for, you know, taking care of uh, finance and, and the nat national level since 2003 because of you we have a very healthy, healthy finance, <laughs> financial um, uh, to date. And things and and David, you do uh, file taxes for chapters if they request, right? So that is correct. Uh, there's probably about 15 chapters that I have on my list of either ones that are done or, or need to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so anyone like you know from uh, your chapters, if you need help with um, you know tax filing, you don't have CPA that to go to, uh, call David. Or call national and you know get you connected with David. He 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 is very familiar with filing for our chapters in national. So uh, please do so. Okay, let's move on to the next. So uh, he has. So David, thank you so much. So you're going to be talking about the, the tax tax filing at the end. So we're going to move on, and we're going to be talking about three different subjects. Um, one is budgeting, which um, David uh, already touched on, and we're going to talk about the bookkeeping and re the financial reporting. And then lastly, we're going to talk about reimbursements, you know, how to and what you need to do to be compliant with IRS and so forth. So next, um, oh shoot, how do I do this? All right, All right. budgeting. So can we, is Jessica here? Can we do yes. the- Yes, I'm here. At this time for, for the yes. first one? So we're gonna ask you um, throughout this session, uh, some questions. It will be like one question per, uh, for the topic. So the first one 
Um, can you just pull that up? Is it up? Or... Um, shoot, it looks like I can't do it from this angle. Let me see if Charles can do it from the main room. Uh, oh, okay. Go on and I'll try to, so, to launch yeah, when it. Yeah, you have it, um, then let us know. So budgeting is, is simply balancing expenses with expenses with income, right? A good budget can act like the roadmap for, for your organization, determining where, the, where and when the organization will ex deploy its resources and whether it's on the right track financially. And budget helps organization focus on our goals and mission. And so um, I wanted to actually ask Chika, um, we do great budgeting every year, right? So when do we um, need to, to, to plan, I mean, to, to make the, the budget for, for, for the next following year? Hi, Atsuko. Thank you for having me in this panel. So we know uh, we didn't have budgeting until a couple of years ago in our chapter. But now that we, we started doing budgeting towards the end of the year, and that really helps us monitoring our spending. And I think it's important to do before the year end so, so you can reflect on what you've done in the past and then you can kind of see what we need to budget for, for the next year so that you know that uh, how much money you're gonna have and then how much income we, we, we're expecting. And then we try to have a reserve for, uh, well, at least before COVID, we tried to have a reserve for at least you know, 25% uh, in the past so that we know that uh, we, we're in a good health uh, financially. Right, so yeah, so budget is everything, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's like without budget, we can't, we can't plan, right? We can't have events. Exactly. Right? We don't know how much to spend. So, so Philip, uh, Philip, your chapter is Brooklyn, right? That's correct. And you have a very, you know, long, you know, history of uh, being in, in the financial field. And how is your chapter doing? Chapter's doing fine. First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, the chapter's doing fine. Uh, relatively a new chapter. So, um, you know, kind of begins that it's uh, really doing it with pencil and paper. Um, and then, as David said, evolving into looking into the software as the uh, chapter grows and you get larger membership, more sponsors, donations, and you get involved in, in more activities. Uh, so, you know, we see ourselves meeting on it. Um, I think you need to bring the parties in from various committees because, as you mentioned, um, every party has part of that budget and they should have their input and their knowledge into it. So that's kind of the planning process to get to the next step to actually sit down and, and, and do it. Right. That's, uh, that's great. Well, thank you for your input. And um, we have we only have like you know 30 minutes for this session so we have to like really quickly move on i'd like to speak more on the budgeting how important it is and by the way the new bylaw calls for a mandatory requirement um, to have a pre-set what do you call it pre-authorized expenses and to be to, to to be reimbursed to any of the members so budget, if you don't have the budget, you can't really reimburse any of the expenses that you spend, right? So it's very important. So I'm gonna go over next is the steps in creating budget. So I just kind of lay out the steps, four steps. You tell me what your chapter wants to achieve in the coming year, right? The second, deploy realistic estimate on how much it will cost to achieve all of those goals. Number three, estimate what your income source for, for that year will be. And then number four, after the budget is aligned, accept, accept expectations with, with re reality. So, and um, I have this uh, link to uh, some really good tool about how to and, you know, budget uh, for nonprofits. So um, if you want the link or if you can, um, take down that link, um, I highly recommend it.
Maybe I can put it in the chat uh, later. But so we're going to have to move on to the next topic: bookkeeping and financial reporting. Now, Jessica, can we do the poll now? It doesn't look like I can. I can do it from this angle. Uh, Charles went to the main room to try to do it from there. Okay. Okay, Sorry, we'll just, if it... it's okay. It's okay. So bookkeeping. So of course, bookkeeping is bookkeeping, right? So how? I don't know. You you can jump in. You know, you can unmute yourself. I mean, I, are there any chapters that don't use any like uh, online system, like bookkeeping system? We use QuickBooks. QuickBooks. Sorry. Yeah. Any manual? Because I think manual can. I mean, if it's simple enough, manual will work uh, as long as you do it right. And. Um, how many chapters outsource this bookkeeping? Well, our chapter, we have uh, the Greater Sacramento chapter. We have a uh, actual bookkeeper. Uh, she's on volunteer, which is awesome, but she keeps track of all our uh, expenses. How nice. Yeah. So I think, you know, if you can't, not at all treasurer, uh, you know, it, it, you know, members that become treasurer have the background in accounting or bookkeeping. Right, right. Right? I mean, yes. you mean good and you want to help the chapter, but you don't have the skill and which is, which happens a lot. And then the bookkeeping doesn't, it gets dragged behind and then, you, you know, later on you have to fix it and clean it up and whatnot. So if that happens to our chapter, so we know. Yeah. So I think in the beginning, I mean, if you know that the, the person who becomes the treasurer um, does not have that skill, then think about maybe hiring and outsourcing that bookkeeping portion of what we need to do, right? So I don't know, David, do you have any inputs on that? Because bookkeeping is very important, right? And how often, like, you know, is it every month, every quarter? You know, I think every chapter does that differently, so. Recommend that every, um, most likely it's best to outsource it. Find a bookkeeper that the chapter can have, say, hey, every once a quarter can update the books and then provide the accounting reports to the board at least once a quarter to review. And that might be as simple as going, here's a list, um, not only seeing where they are compared to the budget, but also going through the checks and the deposits. Because when you're with a smaller organization, you can actually go, you know what, let's go through each one of these checks and make sure that these make sense. Um, it's like an audit that each one of the board members can look at and it's small enough that you guys could probably go through it in about anywhere like about 45 minutes, maybe a, a half hour to look through each one of the, the money coming in and the money going out once every three months. If you do have a good treasure that can do the bookkeeping, that is really nice. The problem is about having one treasure is that treasure or secretary or board member that's really good at the accounting, they're not gonna be there forever. So you might get one good two, maybe three good years with that person, um, but you really wanna have somebody that you can find that you can really keep with the organization for years. Yeah, and remember, you know, uh, the bylaw, the new bylaw calls for a requirement to have that financial reporting every, every single board meeting. Right. I don't know if every every chapter is doing that. Uh, our chapter, you know, we we try to do it to have the financials at the board meeting every time. But you know, that might that doesn't happen every time. So this now that the new bylaw uh, is is called for. You know, it, it, it is a requirement. So having a good bookkeeper and keeping track of all the in, you know expenses and you know, balancing is, is very important. Um, here at the financial reporting, um, so again, the new bylaw uh, calls for annual meeting for all the general members. So um, I guess at the end of the year, um, you have, or any time of the year, I think, once a year, once a year, you have to have annual meeting for the general member, and that has to include the uh, the financial reporting, 
and you have to open your book to all of the members. So um, any comments on this? <laughs> Jasmine, I know your chapter is doing really, like you're already doing this. Yeah, we have a little bit unfortunate because we have the uh, right? volunteer she's very good. Uh, but I, I definitely agree with David that you need to have some kind of uh, continuity, right? And definitely the, the treasure, you know, even though the kinesthesia mean that they know how to look, right? And it's very important to the chapter. You need to be very clear on that because you run into a lot of problems with the funds and, you know, not correctly accounted for. And um, so I think this is a start, but definitely I think we, uh, there's room for us to look at a way that we can standardize and, and have a consistent, uh, continuous way that people can keep track of their expenses and budgeting and all that. Right, that's correct, true. So we're running out of time, so we're gonna go right into expenses and reimbursements. And we have a little video that I wanna show you, so. Nonprofits employees or volunteers are likely to have business-related expenses yes. that they pay out of pocket. In the U.S., you must follow certain reimbursement procedures. Oh. What? what happened? Or include the payments in reportable compensation. Here are the best practices for expense reimbursement. Reimbursements made under an accountable plan, as defined by the IRS, allow you to reimburse your employees or volunteers for their business-related expenses without including their expenses in their compensation, which might be subject to payroll taxes. In addition, employees or volunteers won't have to report the payments with their taxable income. These rules are aimed at preventing organizations from misclassifying payments to employees and volunteers as reimbursements if they're actually compensation. You need to provide employees and volunteers with a standard expense reimbursement form to be used each time expenses are submitted for reimbursement that have all necessary information. If your nonprofit reimburses employees or volunteers for expenses through a fixed amount, such as an allowance or stipend, without requiring documentation, the reimbursements are considered non-accountable by the IRS. If your organization doesn't use an accountable plan, you are able to reimburse expenses that exceed the IRS time limit. However, these payments are still considered taxable. Make sure your internal expense reimbursement policy establishes how to book travel, the approval process, and regularly scheduled audits. Creating expense reimbursement policies can be confusing. If you have questions, ask your attorney or tax advisor for help. Then, share the rules with your employees and volunteers, and stress the importance of compliance. So, when you see that IRS mark, you go, whoa, this is serious matter, <laughs> right? Did you know that if you don't comply with the rules, that the expenses are not reimbursable and you have to, it's, it's taxable, correct? Mm -hmm. That's Jasmine and Chica? Yes. I mean, that's my understanding is because if there's an IRS audit and if the rules are not complied with, not only are you jeopardizing just the amount that can be reimbursed, but you know, you can have other bigger auditing issues, right? And I mean, our organization is based on certain accounting practices. Right? It's all very important. Very important. And I don't know if all the chapters are complying with it, but so that is why, again, going back to budgeting, if you don't have the budget for certain expenses, then? Then you cannot get reimbursed. Right. And then to get the reimbursement, you have to follow the policy, reimbursement policies, and uh, make sure that you provide evidence of the, you know, provide the receipt or something that shows the evidence of the reimbursement. Right. So um, on the screen, I put it here, like the four kind of uh, things that you need to have the reimbursement form, standard form, right? Mm -hmm. The standard form has to have who incurred expenses, what was purchased, when and where it occurred, and what was uh, the business purpose of the expense and was business purpose of ex oh, was the business purpose of the expense. Okay, well, same thing. Um, so this is actually our chapter's uh, form. We actually took exactly the same format from national. I don't know. Uh, Every chapter should have a form like this, right? And it covers all of that four points. And if you don't have it, please 
um, reach out to National, reach out to me, you know, we can share the form with you and you can just change the logo and there you go. So um, that's uh, the reimbursement. So accountable plan. So did you understand? I mean, this little video they were talking about accountable plan is when you have to have um, the established expense reimbursement policy. So you end, you have to follow it, right? And in that policy, he's gonna, you're gonna say, you're gonna have the who, what, where, how, right? And the process, approval process. And, and preset reimbursement rate, if you want to set that rate. Like in our chapter, what do we do, Chika? <laughs> well, we do have a budget. So for example, for travel expenses, we have a budget. So even though you spend a little bit more than the budget, you don't get full reimbursement you only get partial reimbursement because of the budget. Right. So right. like what we do is like we, 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 we allocate certain amount of money for certain events like travel to national mm -hmm. convention or whatnot. And then depending on how many people we go, right, go from our, our board, board yep. then we kind of prorate and, and divide and, and, and so forth. And we don't go over that budget. No. Right. So then reimbursement also needs to come in in that form within 60 days. Ideally, yes. <laughs> Ideally, but to be compliant, is that, is that right? I don't know, David, within 60 days, right? To be compliant for IRS before it becomes your income. You really do want it right away because you want everybody to have the accurate financial statements when we review them at the end of the three months period for each board meeting. So if you don't have those till the end of the year, if somebody comes in at the December 31st and says, hey, I got a whole bunch of expense reimbursements, you're like, well, that completely blew our budget and we thought we were having a good year. If you do it after the year and it's already closed, then you're getting into the next year's budget because, oh, so try to do 60 days because you're gonna cause all kinds of problems. Yeah. I know national has 45 day rule. So depending on how you want to do it, if you want to make sure that you want to do it within 60 days, you might want to say 45 days or so, right? 30 hey, days. Optico, it's uh, that time to switch yes, now. So I'm going to be moving you guys oh, to no. the next. Yeah, did you come on, Wadi? Oh, guys, fine. Thank you, warmed up. <laughs> oh, no, we didn't get back. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay, I'm going to be swapping everybody over. Hang tight. All the participants, please stay put. Yeah, everybody stay put. We're just gonna move the participants like magic. Thank you. Hey guys. Look at that, like magic. Our national secretary appears. <laughs> <laughs> like All right. Have a great time, you guys. Thank you. I'll, I'll, well, to I'll try to, we'll try to interject uh, about uh, five minutes before the. Uh... Okay. Comment is excited. Okay. So, welcome. Uh, my name is Atsuko Yuve. I am the 2020 treasurer for you and uh this is the treasurer got a lot out of your treasurer panels here we're going to do our best to try to try to keep the consistency up here with with the secretary's portion of it so it is my distinct honor to be here with ken avellino who is our national advisor slash attorney that keeps us all out of trouble uh two wins here with abby win burke the president elect for boston and the secretary of boston uh nari win the Tri-County Secretary and part of your CDC, the amazing team on CDC here. And my dear friend Bowie, my sister Bowie down in Miami, enjoying the, su the sunshine down in down South Beach there in her high rise, looking at uh, everything in there and the amazing views I see on Facebook. So, um, so with that said, we're gonna try and make this fun and exciting. 
um, and try not to let people go to sleep here. But we have a video to play for you to start, and then Ken is going to give a presentation um, about how to uh, how to run a proper meeting. And as we click play and go. We're all here, we should start. All right, uh, thanks for coming, guys. I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about some ideas for the marketing strategy this year. So if you got one, just throw it out there. Yeah, um, how long is this meeting supposed to last? The schedule wasn't exactly clear. Should be out here in 30. Is that approximate? Or? Hey guys, sorry I'm a couple minutes late. I got caught in traffic. Seven minutes, actually. Okay. A couple is two. So what we're doing is we're just coming up with some ideas for our new marketing strategies. Anyone? I think we should implement Pinterest. Oh, that's a fun idea. What about a publicity event in the park? Interesting. But how are you going to plan around the weather? What if it rains? <laughs> So we'll party in the rain. Okay, just want to emphasize there's no bad ideas here. We're just brainstorming. So. Yeah, I'm just really thinking it'll be a huge waste of money to try to plan around it. Yeah, okay, we get your concerns. Nancy, thank you. Okay, um, anyone else have an idea? Effort. I've always wanted to see rain fall down all at once in a big splash instead of small drops over time. Yeah. Eleni, can you stop there? Sure. The irrigation system. Okay. Well, um, I have an idea from my previous job that I had last year. But, um, I mean, Do you want the presentation now? Yes, yes. What did you guys get out of that video? First thoughts, please chime in on the chat group. So, so that's how not to have a meeting. <laughs> so. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, um, uh, you know, many meetings are that way. So um, probably the best way is uh, before you have your meeting is um, to have a, maybe a checklist and, and the checklist should include maybe sending a notice 10 days before the board meeting, you know, include the location, time and place. Um, also attach the last uh, minutes of the last board meeting so they can review it to save time during the board meeting. Also include the treasurer's monthly balance sheet and income statement um, with that notice. Also try to have the meeting the same day each month and same time. Maybe, for example, like Wednesday at lunch um, for, for efficiency. Uh, can you go to the next page, Elena? Uh, when you come to the meeting, come to the meeting prepared, um, you know, follow the agenda. The president or the chair should quickly take um, attendance, uh, determine if there's a quorum. Um, and then the president should immediately call the uh, meeting to order. And, um, you know, just basic administrative things remind the board that um, all of, everyone signed a confidentiality agreement. What happens in the board meeting stays in the board meeting. If anyone in the board has a conflict, they need to disclose it, uh, especially if any issue that's going to be discussed during that meeting. And if anyone is aware of any antitrust issues, um, you know, disclose it at that meeting. And then, you know, right away after you do that, go to the next uh, review and approve the last uh, meeting board minutes. And then, um, then approve the treasurer's report. By doing all this, then you got a system. So you can knock all these out like in the first, you know, five, 10 minutes of the board meeting. Um, can you go to the next slide, please, Elena? Um, and then discuss recent events, um, discuss old business, you know, have reports from each committee, the new um, business. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and, and, you know, have respect, you know, try to start and end the meeting on time, um, respect confidentiality, don't discuss political issues that has nothing to do with the, um, with the chapter board. Um, and before you end, remind the, the board of the time and date of the next meeting and thank, end by thanking the board for their time as, as we know, we're all volunteers. Um, next slide, please. And then, you know, the best is to use Robert's Rules of Orders. Um, you know, it, it was written um, 
over a hundred years ago and it's used by most organizations, private companies, even um, government organizations. Uh, next slide. Uh, and and I used to I like to use the acronym respect. You know, it's it's I'm one of those nerds that always try to come up with acronyms. So, but but you know, um, as Dick said in the previous meeting, one of the most important thing in our meetings is respect. You know, everyone's volunteer, so respect everyone's time. You know, follow Robert's rules of orders, execute Robert's or orders, have a systematic system like the checklist. Be professional, come on time, start on time, end on time, encourage others, empower others, be courteous to everyone, and be timely. Uh, next slide, please. Um, can you just go to the next slide? Okay, again, just have an agenda. You know, send the agenda early, have an, an, an printed agenda again during the meeting. Um, when you want to have a motion, a motion is a proposal for the board to take some type of action. So if you want to make a motion, I move or I motion, you know, for example, I move that we um, hold the event at this venue. Um, and then before, once someone makes a motion, before that motion can be discussed, another member has to second that motion. If no one seconds that motion, there can be no discussions and the president or chair will say the motion fails for a lack of a second. Um, what is very common in most motions is a move to amend. Um, and it's just to clarify sometimes the why don't we, we make a motion to order, you know, 1000 t-shirts and they might say, you know, another person might say that's too much. Why don't we, I move to amend to 500 t-shirts. So, you know, move to amend is very common. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes there's a, a, a motion to amend to amend, but that gets too complicated. But so, and then after, after then there will be, you know, have a discussion. And when you're having a discussion, uh, make sure that the president can set time limits. If, you know, in most cases we don't, but if someone's talking too long, they're gonna, the president can set a time limit, okay, you know, two minutes per person, one minute per person, and it will go around the room till everyone spoke before the same person can speak again. Um, then you would hold a vote. Um, now, during the discussion, sometimes it will be, um, maybe there's not enough information to have a vote but they don't want to kill the motion. So someone might make a motion. Let's table this motion and set it aside for the next board meeting. So that's just tabling. But to table, you would have to um, make a motion to table. Um, next slide, please. Do you need a second when you amend? Yes, you do. So if, if like, for example, um, I, um, I, I, I move to amend the motion that we changed from 1,000 t-shirts to 500 t-shirts, you need a second before that uh, motion to amend can continue. That is a very good question. Any other question on, on that? Okay. Um, okay, next slide, please. Okay, now, once in a while, there there's, there's going to be a disagreement between two or three board members and they're going to want to debate. Um, if there ever is a debate, the president's going to set the rules. They might say, you know, uh, board member one will have one minute, board member will have two minutes, and then they'll so they can debate um, that motion. Um, and sometimes that happens and sometimes that doesn't. Then after that, after that time is up, the president will call it and then call for a vote. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Um, next slide. Okay. Well, I, I guess I'm uh, sorry. I'm 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 almost out of time. So, anyone have any questions? I know I went through that really quick. Um, just a quick Robert rules of orders and um, some some ideas for for having a meeting. Any and questions? can you do a second grade terminology for antitrust? Okay, antitrust would be like, um, let's, let's, um, okay, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it. Antitrust is actually a very big issue and the government's starting to go after nonprofit organizations. So for example, let's say, let's only do business with, you know, um, 
this business, H&A Bank, or let's say we're not going to do business with this one anymore. Um, or, you know, so that's antitrust. Or, but it could be very, it could be very, very simple. Whenever you have a group of, um, especially real estate agents or, or real estate professionals, and you're deciding to just go with one vendor or word like this, 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 that's, that, that could be an antitrust violation. Okay, and, and, and I will, I have a detailed handout that I usually give to the leadership meetings that will discuss it in detail um, of, of many examples of antitrust violations. But, or, or it could be don't do business in this section of the city or something like that. That's all antitrust. Awesome, great job with that, Ken. And Abby, thank you for that difficult question for antitrust. It's, uh, you know, it's antitrust. Not even know what that means. Hopefully we never have to cross that into a board meeting. But um, yeah, so anyways, let's move on. So the biggest thing is about respect, okay? We're all volunteer servants here for ARIA, which is a great organization. Um, so let's move on to this because we have 15 minutes left. Um, I know that there's gonna be a lot of questions afterwards. We had a lot of questions at the last session, so let's move this forward. So speaking about minutes, meetings, agendas, Bowie and, the, and our panelists, Let's start with you, Bowie. How, how do we handle meetings, agendas? How, how are you taking your minutes and everything else? Sure, so what's helped us a lot is um, the president provides the meeting minutes, um, the agenda prior, sorry, not the minutes, but the agenda prior to the meeting. So that way, what I do is just copy and paste that and then we stick to um, the agenda. And then I'll also copy and paste from a prior one who the board members are, so that way we can just do attendance really quick. And then um, we will upload it to um, Google Docs so that everyone can access that um, onto Google Drive. So that's help, that, that's gonna help us a lot. And yeah. the folks that have access to this is the current board of directors? Correct, so just the board right now. So I, I saw in the chat, someone said that it's open to all ARIA members. Um, but right now we just have it for the board. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Abby and Nari, anything to add to that? How, how are you guys doing differently in your chapters? And uh, everybody's, Abby's still muted. Go yeah. ahead, Nari. Oh, okay. Thank you, Abby. Uh, we do do the same. It's a uh, push out the agenda, follow the agenda, stick to it. That helps us focus. And we, um, we of course, we go ahead and um, push it out. And after that, we, um, I write it all up and then make sure that it's sent out right away. Awesome. Abby, you good? Uh, yeah, so I was just going to say all similar. Um, I would just say two things that I do um, to help with the efficiency is since we are in a Zoom environment that whenever board members leave, have to step out, they have to let me know so that I make note of it and to make sure that we still have quorum and count their votes. Um, and then the other thing is I leave another 15 minutes after the meetings and I clean up the minutes and send that out within 24 hours really just to make sure that it's fresh in board members minds so that they can review it right away and then suggest any edits um, that we need to make before the next board meeting so that um, it gets clarified right away and that by the time that they look at it again at the next board meeting they've already reviewed it at least once awesome awesome let's segue into you know meetings our elections and how do we record the meetings, Abby? So you know we have we have our elections coming up. Uh, yep. National, we would love to see every all the local chapters have their elections before our national convention in October. Um, and that really, for many reasons, it gets it gets essentially two boards into one package to work together, so the succession planning works better. Uh, so Abby, let's talk a little bit and, and the rest of the panel. Let's talk a little bit about elections and how we're recording that and um, and how's it all flow. Sure. So when you uh, have elections, make sure you set the timeline as far out as possible. Send out the open positions, descriptions, information, um, send out applications, and then really review bylaws with the current board members so that they know some bullet points, minimum board members, maximum board members, terms, um, any specifications of percentage of if you have a percentage of real estate professionals. Um, and then when we tally 
tally up the votes, you do have to record it in minutes. Um, we don't list specific names of which votes, we just do the uh, tally number and the, um, the, the, the end results. Nari, Bowie, anything to add to that? Um, we're a smaller chapter, so we don't have, um, we don't really have that many elections. So I'm glad that we're doing these panels and, you know, um, discussing it now. So that way we can go over it as a new, ch as a newer chapter. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and the reason why this, so the so folks know, the reason why Abby, Bowie, and Nari are here on the panel is because it represents a large scale chapter, mid size and small. So we recognize that all the chapters, you know, all 41 chapters are different sizes with their different mix of every, everybody. So that's why we chose this, this in this method here. So the next thing goes about, you know, in the digital world of the new norm here in Zoom. Nari, how, how are we doing the, how are we doing this? And how do you make it, all these meetings, you know, especially a board meeting? How do you corral right. this? Right, yeah. So the last four or five meetings, we've all transitioned into, you know, most of us onto the Zoom platform, which is our virtual world. And as you go about doing that, you learn as you go. And I've come up with the four key ingredients that really make a virtual BOD meeting very productive. And so to keep it so that everyone can follow along, I went ahead and spelled it out. And it's four, which is spelled differently, but it's F-O-R-E. And so the F stands for focus. So when you're in your BOD meeting, focusing, staying on that agenda, uh, making sure all the business is taken care of, uh, that's very important. And the letter O is for openness, being transparent. Now in the virtual world, it's very important to make sure that that communication is put out there. We don't have the body language, which really makes up, and I've done the research, makes up for 60% of the communication. And the 40% is what's actually being said. So we miss half of that you know, conversation without the body language. And so it's very important to make sure that transparency is there, that you notate everything on the meeting minutes, the actions, the follow-ups. And of course, the letter R is for respect. And as Ken and uh, Dick Lee had, uh, you know, mentioned respect is a very, uh, it, it's a golden rule and for all of us. And that comes in many forms. Uh, it can be respect can be when you're on the BOD meetings and you give your undivided attention to that person talking. That is respect. Uh, respect is allowing that other person to talk when they're talking. And so, it is uh, very important to have that uh, respect. And lastly, E is to be encouraged and engaged um, in your BOD meetings uh, to make sure that you bring up your ideas and to stay engaged so that all the actions and all of that can be completed. I had to unmute myself there. Sorry, I, my dog was barking upstairs. I'm downstairs in my gym here, and uh, and the dog was going crazy upstairs barking. So I muted myself. And thank you, Nari. Yeah. So yeah, four is powerful. You know, I, you know, I know that Stephen Inn is watching. He's in Boston. He's he's heard me yell four a few times while playing golf. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's a new way of looking at four. Um, yeah. So guys, anything? Bowie and Abby, anything to add to that about how we're doing Zoom meetings, the digital, the digital way? Those are great. Um, those are great points to start, and you know, keep doing it. And I think it's a new age that we live in, definitely. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll change soon. Yeah, part of me is missing all, missing all, missing all of you. Really, you know, missing several different events and seeing everybody here. But um, so we got a couple of questions here um, that popped up in the chat chat box here. Um, Reina says, "Any chapters do approval by email vote instead of during." The next meeting that is approval of the minutes um so yeah so the, the question is are we approving the minutes before the next meeting is really the question is that right reina yes that's correct we send the minutes around in advance and do a take an email vote so that it's not an agenda item for the next minute it's been approved by email votes okay um anybody want to grab that one 
Okay. The, the, the only thing was on whenever you have a vote, that's when there's not a meeting. Um, it, if the only problem with that is that if the vote should be, has to be emailed and um, has to be date time stamp like DocuSign or faxed in. Um, if there, there's, there's a vote when there's no, uh, no meeting. But since the board minutes is so minor, that, that, that's probably okay. But any major vote should be DocuSign or faxed in if it's not during the meeting. Thank you for that, I would also say that if you do choose to do that, that you list it in the next set of minutes that, you know, June 25th meeting minutes were approved to be an email X date, and then you record the votes, like you record, you know, how many abstained, how many opposed, how many yays and nays, so that there is somewhere that has that vote. That's excellent. What we do is we keep the email trailed. Everyone has to vote on the same email so that it's in a string that the, the votes, with the vote that call, the email that calls for the vote, everyone has to vote on that chain. And then I preserve that email chain. And then in the meeting, we just say that the minutes were approved by email vote unanimously, uh, you know, et cetera. We record that at the premier, as opposed to tabling it for that month meeting. Raina, I have a question for you, Raina. So that's for the minute when you're doing this specifically for the minutes. But right. what? It, so let's 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 take back to the election question. So in, in the world, in the digital world of Zoom and FaceTime voting, um, what you know? How are we how are we recording the votes? Are they done anonymously? Are they how how are you doing? I mean, there's no wrong answer. We uh, haven't had the opportunity. Yet. We're a new chapter. We're the forty second chapter. The brand new one. Um, so we haven't had a chance to do an election by anything except being appointed uh, at our gala installation. We, as we signed up to join, we joined as what our offices are. So um, we haven't had a, an election per se yet. Any other vote that is done is done at the meeting by voice, vo voice, voice vote and recorded in the minutes following Robert's orders. So we haven't had the opportunity to do anything. The only thing we've done by email or non in person voting has been the minutes approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, three minute morning, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, but three minutes. Thank you. Thank You'll Charles. be returning to the general session. Yeah. Um, Abby, can you chime in really quickly about recording votes for an election just for, for the newer chapters? Sure. So when you uh, start tallying up the vote, making sure that you have two people, usually it's the secretary and the president, unless they're running for a certain position, then you're um, giving it to somebody like an advisory board member, somebody that doesn't have a conflict of interest on it. Um, you're tallying up the votes and then you're recording it in minutes um, of the, the, the numbers and not necessarily the people because it is anonymous. Um, and if you need to do it by via email, um, just making sure that those ballots are signed, stamped, date, and then sent to an email that is a third party, like an advisory board where there's no conflict. Thank you okay, for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, just one minor point on that, just make sure who's ever doing the counting is not running for the election. May I get the, a clarification on one item? Sure, Christina. Yeah, uh, on the voting via email, do we put, or do we set a deadline on that one? Like, should it only be on a specific day and it could not be uh, up to a certain, like two or three days after the email has been sent? Yes, yes, you okay. want it list it at least at, we've done it where it was 48 hours thank you and nari and bowie you guys do something different there in your chapters same thing 48 hours yes awesome and then the last question really is um has national considered hosting an annual robert rules of order virtual training for all board of directors um, that's from Cindy Wu. And Cindy, that's a great idea. I think um, if Elena and the chapter development team could list that, that could be a, uh, I'm sure, an exciting virtual event to go to. I will make a note of that. There's a little book that the CDC should send out to every single chapter secretary. 
Jessica says we're making a note of that at the leadership summit. Awesome. Any more questions, guys? Unmute yourself. Let's unmute yourself. Turn your cameras on. Let's say hi. Don't be shy. You guys <laughs> I want to see you guys. There we go. Love it. Hey, Dick Lee. Great job moderating this panel. Thank you. Tom. Both panels. Good job, brother. Go. My video is on. Everyone else, thank you as well for, uh, for speaking and sharing. Right. Love it. Say hi to Love everyone. It. Hey, we're just bringing everyone back to the main room for just some final uh, closing remarks. So just stay tuned here.